over the years was Legatron. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But I'm hearing, I'm actually starting a rumor that they're going to change your nickname at Sanford to Grandpa, being the oldest guy on the team. Any legs to that or no? Maybe most not. experienced, most mature leader they'll have. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you've got some time for us tonight. And we got some other folks. Terry Skipper says Legatron. There you go. Uh, and Aaron, Amanda Howell. Uh, thanks, Aaron, for tuning in as, as always. Guys, we're talking with Kobe Noonan, and he has gone from Dothan Northview High School to Tulane to kick to UAB. And each place that he goes, we had bowl games back in the day with Tulane, we're going to get to that. Uh, did you, I can't remember, did UAB attend a bowl game this, this year? We were supposed to play South Carolina in the Gasparilla Bowl after the conference championship. And due to COVID, we had to uh, cancel that. That's, that's right. Well, if, if history dictates, where, where do we see Sanford in the postseason this year? Honestly, I think we should go to a national championship. There you go. There you go. They do a playoff system as well. And, you know, they had a good year last uh, this spring actually it was when they played mm -hmm. uh, i think they were four and three and this year we're gonna try to go undefeated now let's i, I want to kind of talk kicker nerd for a minute or two and i mean this with the utmost respect and admiration for your craft at tulane what was the kicking surface what, what did y'all play on the play surface turf at uab what was the surface turf and we played in Legion Field. It was turf. Well, we're going to get to Legion Field in just a minute. I know that field. How about Sanford? What's your home turf this year? It's going to be that Astro turf. Mm -hmm. And it's it just seems that, I guess, the way of, of grass giving way to this new age of turf, not the Legion Field old style. I don't know what's there now, but back in the day, uh, it used to be concrete, maybe a quarter inch of rubber, and then something that was the original AstroTurf all sewed together in five and 10 yard seams. That was just the worst thing. I once saw in pregame uh, an attempt, a uh, field goal kicker warming up, catch his foot under the turf. And to say the least, it, it was not a good, good sight. But I suspect Samford's turf is going to be a, probably as nice a turf as there is these days. Have you had any opportunities to kick there yet? Yeah, I've had a chance when I did my workout for them, a private workout while I was in the transfer portal. And um, I had a great day and they really liked what they saw. And that was the day they decided they were going to offer me a scholarship. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, do you remember, did you happen to be wearing your Tulane or UAB gear when you went there? Or did you go plain, plain no, clothes? You can't, you can't do that. It's <laughs> I just wore, you know, a plain a Nike t-shirt, Nike shorts, and, you know, I, just, I wanted to be wearing their gear now. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. Well, Kobe, let's, let's back up. Let's take it back to middle school, elementary school. Where'd you grow up? What city? What part of town? So I went to Highlands Elementary here in Dothan, and then uh, I went to Carver Middle School. Um, Coach Ferris, who's a leader in FCA now, I got news for you, bud. He was one of my coaches way back in the day. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of his first coaching jobs at Girard Middle School. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was my eighth grade football coach. And then um, I didn't play football my ninth grade year. Uh, I played soccer. And they, I was a goalie. And they saw me uh, hitting the punts and you know goal kicks. And that's how the coach Stewart and DR kind of recruited me on to kick. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you come from a soccer background or you just happen to be playing uh, at the same time that you played middle school football? So I didn't even kick in middle school. I wanted to be a, a receiver or a safety or something along those lines. But um, I didn't think I really had the size to play football. So that's why I didn't play ninth grade. And that's when um, another kicker before me, uh, his name was Zach Shira. He was a soccer player that was a kicker. And uh I kind of looked up to him and saw what he was doing and I, he, I trained with him a little bit and it kind of clicked just naturally. I remember my first day kicking, I hit a 45 yard field goal. Hmm. That was my first day. If you've got the gift, you've yeah. got the gift. But I, I, I'm sure as I talked to Jinsu and Brian and Jack and all these other uh, Northview kickers, it really is as much uh, about technique 
athletic ability and mindset. When the, those three things are, are working together, that at least for the way they describe it, that's when they're kicking their best. They're not gonna make every kick, but they may strike the ball the way that they want to. Describe a little bit about your mindset approaching hunting and kicking, which I know are very different uh, actions and, and abilities. Yeah, I'm glad you recognize that as well, because some people think, oh, if you can kick, you can punt, which is not the case. It's two completely different leg swing, body mechanics. Um, with punting, it's, it's more of a straight, linear, hips clear through extension, mm -hmm. whereas kicking is also more of a, a torque in your hips and ball contact finishing towards your target, the uprights. Just kick it between the yellow things and you're good. What, uh, your senior year, did you handle both responsibilities at Northview? Yes. Kickoff, mm -hmm. field goals, and punts. Oh, wow, all, all three. What about uh, junior year? Did you get some playing time, or were you handling that then as junior well? Junior year, I was my first year starting with Northview, and I handled all three then as well. How, talk a little bit. Again, Again, we're going we're gonna to continue to kind of kickers nerd out here a little bit, uh, but how did you learn your punting techniques? Was it the kicker before you, or did you follow so I I, YouTube? You, you spoke or Brian, Brian Jackson, mm -hmm. and he was my first <laughs> kicking coach. And, you know, he really helped me develop my skills, and I, I give a lot of credit to him. He was the foundation for my kicking techniques. Well, I, I want to see how good you were in comparison to back in my day. I averaged a mean 34 and a half yards per punt. That wasn't net. That was total. So go ahead and let's hear your 45 plus. Uh, it was only a 40 in high school. But, it, but, but 14, 17 on field goals. Wow. Wow. Well, it, did they ever, did Coach Stewart ever try you out for other positions or was he just of the mindset, this is what I need for, from you for our team? I think they wanted to my senior year because I, I, you know, hit the weight room hard and I developed to an athlete that kicks. But he knew that kickers can win games and special teams can, you know, it changes the game. So I was able to focus just on those, those parts of the game. Well, what, let's, let's go to the, the, the field goal kicking aspect first. What, when did you start gaining some confidence? When, when did you know in your head, hey, this is something I, I'm pretty decent at doing and I want to keep developing this craft and maybe even take it to the, the next level. I want to say it was the summers between like my junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I attended several uh, camps that Brian Jackson himself hosted mm -hmm. and other university camps where I saw, you know, other guys that were also kickers. And I kind of saw where I, I was kind of near the top of the pack. Mm -hmm. And I was started thinking, oh, no, maybe I can keep doing this a little bit more. And Coach Stewart was telling me, hey, you can go play in college somewhere for kicking, you know, get a scholarship. And, you know, I'm really glad they pushed me that way. And it, it's paid off a lot. It's crazy how far kicking a ball has gotten me. It certainly, it certainly has. You're on your third university, third degree coming up. That's so cool. Sixth football season. Let's talk about flexibility. Uh, kickers and punters come in all shapes and sizes. I, I've seen successful punters who are tall and slender, but just had awesome flexibility. Uh, I think that's probably closer to the to now, but they're, they're also very muscular. Kickers, on the other hand, back in the day, they could be short, fat, stumpy, but if they had a strong leg, but that's not, athletes today are not like they were back in the day. They're athletes, and I'm not belittling the position one bit. But talk about your, your, your approach to the sport. It, are weights important? Is yoga, stretching, Pilates? What, what is part of your routine? So weight room is a big deal to me. I mean, I heavy on the squats, bench, all the above. Um, stretching is also very important. Um, I wake up daily and stretch. Um, going out on the field, um, just the more you kick also builds up like flexibility and, you know, durability. I mean, I've kicked probably about the last three days in a row. But then they say it's similar to pitching where you're not supposed to do too much, but it's just, you know, the more you work, more conditioned you become. 
And um, we're just really working hard so we can have a great year this year. Well, it's, has anybody ever commented, hey, your right leg is so much bigger than your left. Do you walk funny as a result? <laughs> I will say my right, my right leg is a little bit bigger than my left, not by much, but I did get a compliment when I went in for my physical at Sanford. Um, one of the guys came up to me and said, so you're a linebacker, right? And I just gave him a laugh. I was like, no, no. Was, oh, you're a quarterback. He, like he knew it immediately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, man, I'm a, I'm a kicker and a punter. <laughs> He's like, get out of here. And his dad was with him too. And they're like, just looking all, they just were not expecting it. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a full six, three, 215 pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, I don't know how much advertising you need to share all that and your other uh, athletic skills with the Samford coaching staff, you may find yourself pulling some extra work if you're not careful. But I, Kobe, I want to, I've got want to recognize one of my teammates, Ross Morris, out of the Auburn area, is with us. Ross's son went to Auburn High School, and I think he's now playing or was playing, uh, I think, at the military academy. Ross, tell me where where's your son these days? I know he had a fantastic uh, high school career, rushed for 17, 1800 yards. And then another gentleman who you may know was the two-way Alabama coach of the year this year. I'll give you one hint who it is, who's just joined us. The GOAT, Legatron, one of the strongest legs I've ever coached has joined us. Coach Stewart. Thanks, LeBron. Good to see you, bud. I'm glad you're with us for a little bit. Talking oh, with you. Let's go. That's right. That's right. Let's talk a little pregame routine in high school. What was it like being on Coach Stewart's team? And I know kickers, holders, and snappers, they kind of are to themselves most of the time. But you're still part of the greater team, of course. Talk to us about pregame. Let's talk about a Friday at Rip Hughes. What's your afternoon look like before the game? Friday in Rip Hughes? Well, we'd always start out with a pregame meal. Uh, it was always really good. Coach Stewart hooked us up with that. And then uh, my snapper was Jake Hutto. My holder was Jeffrey Greer. Um, they were all, they both were really confident in me. We worked a lot throughout the summer before and during the season. And then Coach Stewart always had the most confidence in me. He believed in me. And, you know, that really helped perk me up and helped me out. And then would you ride over to the team, ride over on the buses? or yeah, you we all rode over on the buses. We get to Rip Hughes. Uh, we get in the little grass area just off the field, and we do our little warm-ups. And uh, so me and Jeffrey, Jake, we'd go out on the field, and we just kind of, you know, get our rhythm down, and we'd figure it out. And, you know, Coach Stewart was over there checking us out with uh, Coach Raspberry as well. He was uh, kind of like a special teams uh, coach, liaison. And uh, just kind of getting in the zone before the game, being relaxed. And it was, it was all about having fun, too, at the same time. We were there to win, but having fun – and win and go together. And I'm wondering, I, I, I know you and I don't know each other very well in the last couple of weeks setting this up, but I played way back in the day and, and we were on the, the 85 state team. And I want to say at the they did a reunion recognition in 15. So you would have been the one probably who I caught one of the kickers and it must have been you or whoever your understudy was kicked a ball out to pregame outside the stadium where we happen to be congregating. I look up and the ball's coming right at me. I happen to catch it. I don't know if you kicked it or not, but I thought that was kind of funny. If it was 15, it was definitely me because I believe I was the only kicker on roster that year. Oh, wow. There was that a lot. That is a crazy fate of events. Well, I was going to say, if you're the only kicker, did there was there ever an occasion you weren't available during that season? There was, I believe, one game where I had a tweaked uh, knee, and my boy Colby Easley came in. He played soccer with us, and he hit some PATs that game. Excellent. He, now, he didn't tell me that. I need to get on to him because he was on this show several months ago, and he never said one thing about that. I need to get with him on that. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. What was one? Of, take us to one of your better memories or a couple of your better memories during your uh, – kicking days at Northview for on during the game so definitely my junior year as a team first because I'm a big team guy was just beating Dothan high 
course. And that was, it had been years since that had happened. I had never seen it. And then we finally, we came and we did it as a team. And that was a huge accomplishment to all of us. And then for kind of personal was my senior year was against Stanhope Elmore in the final minutes. I hit a 44 yarder to pit us ahead. And that was big along with playing Carver Montgomery, playing against Mac Wilson, who's in the NFL now. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up being three for three on that game with, two long field goals coming from 49 and 50 yards. Wow. Wow. Is 50 your, your longest of your career? Uh, in game for high school, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say, I know Larry Roberts hit a 50 or 51 yarder, but maybe Brian had a 54. 54 yarder. That may be the school record for, for distance. I, I had a chance at it. Coach Stewart gave me a shot. It was from, uh, I believe, 57 uh, left hash, and I just – Missed it to the left. But I had the leg for it. Oh, I have I have no doubt. No doubt at all. Let's back away from the, the field and, and games for a few minutes. Why did you, I'm assuming, you enjoyed your, your high school years most of all, and you had, and I know you have a lot of pride having been a Northview Cougar, not only as a football player representing the school, but any other endeavors that you did and being a student. But what was it for you that gave you pride of, of being a Northview Cougar back in the day and, and being a graduate now? It was definitely the environment. Like just being at Northview, it had a certain aurora to it that I can remember. The teachers, the, the fac faculty, administrators, everyone just had a, a certain attitude to them where we carried ourselves well and everybody was super respectful. I mean, I really enjoyed my time there and just driving by it nowadays, it just gives me just fond memories. Um, even the other students, they're all great. I have just nothing but thanks to give to Northview. Awesome. Awesome. Who were, who were some of your favorite teachers or classes that you took? Let's see. So class wise. Oh, okay. So <laughs> a lot of people might not like this, but PE was my favorite class. <laughs> um, I took uh, weightlifting basically in the mornings of my senior year with coach Derek Bumpers, mm -hmm. a great strength coach. Uh, so I'd be in there for first and second period, working out, getting ready uh, for when I was about to go to Tulane. Um, Miss Jeff coach, she was one of my um, math teachers my sophomore year and actually lives right across the street from me. Very good. Uh, Mr. Johnson, another math teacher. He was great. There's so many I could think of. Miss Huff, biology. She was awesome. Uh, Miss Dean, another science teacher, she was awesome. Very good, very good. Well, some things may change over the years, but a lot of things remain the same. And I want to welcome JJ Joseph Johnson, a key member of the 81 state championship team. JJ, I hope you're doing well, bud. Hello to your family. Uh, JJ's sister, Carrie, was in my graduating class and was part of the cheerleading squad at times. But uh, we're talking with Kobe Neenum and we haven't even gotten to the Tulane years or really much of the college years. We're sticking a little bit more uh, with the Northview uh, time period. Did we, We've talked with others uh, from your decade about school spirit. At the beginning of the decade, or actually the, the, about 10 years before you, the school, the team went through three just terrible years. It was the, with no wins. Finally, they defeated Opelika on a Thursday night, a 10-7 winner, and you would have thought we'd have won the state championship, and it just changed everything. So here's my question for you. You talked briefly about some of the more memorable games. What about one of the more memorable wins as a team that really just is, it's one of those that you vividly remember, and it may be one that you just mentioned, or it could be another game, because I know Coach Stewart had some had some memorable games in there during your time period. There's a lot of games that were very memorable to me. Um, some not as positive as the others that are, you know, big character building games. Sure. You know, need to shape yourself. Um, but still, like, I think Dothan High beating them my junior year, mm -hmm. along with that Stanhope Elmore win. Um, and then just making playoffs in general, getting to go travel up to Tuscaloosa and play in a, a playoff game was a big deal for us. 
was the, uh, I hate to skip around, but you just reminded me of something. I wanted to ask you, what was the environment like on the bus ride from school or from dinner, wherever y'all had on Friday nights, Friday pregame, to Rip Hughes? Was it just silent as anything, or was there stuff going on in the bus? How did guys treat that pregame ride? It's a business trip, that's for sure. But everybody was in a good mood. You know, you had some guys that were headphone guys, like to be silent. And we had a few other guys that were, that would, you know, chit and chat, you know, but it would be always directed towards our goal of winning that game. That's what uh, kind of reminded me about was the, the trips to the church. We would, uh, we would stop in uh, Montgomery and we would uh, stay in a church and that's where we'd have our pregame meal and we'd have devotion from a few of our uh, brother. Aaron was one of the guys and I can't remember the other one, but that was, those were good moments too. All right. We've just won a big game at Rip Hughes. You're now in the locker room. Coach Stewart's bringing the team together. Is everybody, what's going on in the locker room right then after a big win? Oh, you can feel the energy. Everybody's got a grin on their face sweat dripping down everybody's high-fiving and um it's just a bond of brother like brothership and how fired up was coach stewart in those post-game wins oh he was excited ecstatic he knew how hard we worked and you know when it all works out you know we all celebrated as a team and then when we would have those big wins we'd get on the school same school buses and go back to to campus and that entire drive, sometimes Coach Bubba Johnson, who was one of our coaches back in the day, he would ride around to give us a little bit more time to celebrate on the bus. So they were like a 30 minute bus ride instead of like 10 or 15 minutes. There was nothing but singing. I mean, it was just a party on the bus. What yeah. was it like for you guys on the ride back to campus? Same thing, it was, it was like a party, you know, everybody's hooping, hollering. Um, having a good old time, yelling out the window, we won, Northview won. Now, now pa pause that. Who was the ringleader on the bus in the back of the bus leading the chance? Uh, I think about Tevin White a lot. He reminds – he was he was a vocal guy. Um, Keedron Wilson was another good vocal leader as well. Those are some good times, aren't they? <laughs> Most definitely. Well, but at some point, your Northview days, you got to graduate. Do you have memories of that last game, whether it was Dothan High or playoffs, whatever those last games? Because it, it can be a bittersweet time for some. It can be a very sad time for others. And others just look fondly at it, and they're ready to move to their next step. Now, at that point, before you answer, at that point, did you know you were going to be at Tulane the next year, or had you not committed just yet? So at that point, I was – committed to Georgia Southern. And what happened there is Coach Fritz ended up moving to Tulane and brought me along with him. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about that last game, the playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I was there and I was with several of my brothers. Coach Stewart called us seniors up. And, you know, some of the guys were balling because it was their last football game ever. And then some of the guys, you know, were very stone-faced, like they're accepting that it's over. And then there's a few of us other guys who knew this wasn't the end. We knew that we had a future in football and we're able to continue playing. I'm sure that's what I'm saying. I, depending on who you ask, you get a different emotional response to, to that very situation. All right, what's it like committing to Georgia Southern and then having your coach kind of pick up and, and move west uh, over to Tulane and you decide to come with him. I bet that wasn't an easy decision. Well, there was about a week that went by where I was nervous. I didn't know what was going on. Am I going to still have my offer from Georgia Southern? And am I going to get picked up from Tulane? And finally, uh, about a, like a week goes by and Georgia Southern had already called me and told me, hey, you still have an offer here. We're bringing in a whole new staff, this, that, and the other. But then Coach Fritz called me. And he gave me the, the exciting, hey, we're going to do big stuff here in New Orleans. It's a great academic university. And he fired me up and he said, let's get you on a visit January 21st. First week we can have officials. We want you here. And 
I went in and I, I saw the city of New Orleans and it was it was a it was a it was a time. I think that was one of the first like big cities I had been to outside of Birmingham. Wow. So was that your first visit to Tulane? Yeah, that was my first visit to Tulane in the New Orleans area, and I, I immediately fell in love with it and I committed on the spot. I was gonna say, how can you not fall in love with Tulane and getting a world-class education while getting to play the sport you you love? That's that's a trifecta right there. Now, were there any uh, Wiregrass athletes in any sports that you knew or later learned or met while you were at Tulane? Hmm. There was not really anybody from Dothan that attended Tulane, but I can remember a Dothan High player playing against him was Tyrez Lindsay. He was at Memphis. Mm -hmm. I remember playing against him, and we, we spoke before and after the game. Well, that's, I was going to say, with as many different uh, places where you played for Tulane and probably UAB and maybe even this year, you're going to run into maybe not as many Northview guys because <laughs> they're, they're, I think we're, what are we, two classes beyond or th almost three classes beyond Northview, uh, yeah. but you're certainly going to run into some, some former Dothan High or, or Wiregrass uh, players. Well, we've got a few more minutes, Kobe, and I appreciate you kind of taking us a little bit through your journey uh, I want to stick with Northview just a little bit longer. I want to find out, I usually ask this, is where on campus outside of the locker room, the weight room, anything football, where other places did you like to hang out with your friends and I don't know, just kind of get away a little bit from sports and just be a regular student? Well, on campus, it was the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. uh, they put some ping pong tables in there and that was a lot of fun just uh, doing that and shooting basketball too. Excellent. Did you play any other sports besides soccer and football? No, it was just those two, soccer and football. And I know that soccer years ago was moved to the spring so it wouldn't conflict with football, uh, which I guess helped you to be able to kick all year round. Yeah, definitely. That was big in the development. And when did you start going to kicking camps as a kid? It was my sophomore year, so roughly 15. Okay. Now, we, I know I'm jumping again, jumping all over the place, but things just kind of popped in my head uh, about your journey. Uh, let's talk about kicking in college. What's different about kicking at Tulane or, or UAB that, compared to the high school experience? I feel like the kicking is the same. But the environment and the commitment that it requires is much greater because you're football full time and you're a student full time and you want to be social and do extracurricular activities. It takes up a lot of time, but I think it's really good for developing like in the future when you'd have, you know, 10, 12 hour days potentially. Well, you, you certainly get organized or and because I learned very quickly. If you're not organized, you're not going to be around very long. And they, the, the, the team can't use you because you won't be in school. And so if you don't figure out how to properly manage your time, it, it catches up with you in a hurry. And you mentioned something about extracurricular, extra time. Who has that during the season? No, no one. Not if you're playing football. No, I mean, it's, I, I was never a, much of a, uh, of a player. I didn't get much playing time. But even I just knew, man, it's time to go to sleep. You got to rest up because if not, you're just going to be dragging. Yeah, and squeezing naps in there too was another <laughs> difficult thing because you we'd start at six in the morning with football, and then you might get an hour break after lunch around twelve before your classes start, and so everybody would run to their dorm as quick as they can so they could take a short nap before you start four or five hours of classes. Well, that my freshman year at, at Vanderbilt was when I acquired and perfected the love of napping. In fact, I still nap. I love it. <laughs> Anytime I can take 10, 15 minutes, I'm all for it. But it's there's so much benefits to it as well. All right, let's talk about Tulane. Let's talk about kicking in the bowl games and, and just playing in front of huge crowds, com relatively speaking, compared to high school. Uh, what kind of... Does any of that One of my favorite games that immediately comes to mind? Yeah, was going to Oklahoma and playing against Baker Mayfield. That was an awesome experience. They start open the game 
seven to zero crowd erupts loudest I've ever heard. We get a pick and we score quietest place on earth. Mm-hmm. You could, you can hear a pin drop mm-hmm. and then we score again. And it's 14 to seven at the end of the first, first quarter against Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield's Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And we're feeling good. And then something clicks within Oklahoma mm-hmm. and we don't score again. And it ends up being a roughly 50 something to 14 game. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was a lot of fun playing over there. Um, there's a lot of really good games that we had there, but I like to think back to the bowl games, especially um, Tulane hadn't been to one in years and we got selected for the Cure Bowl in Orlando and we got to go to the theme park and everything and they gave us the works and best of all, we won and we beat ULL and we got this bad boy here. I was just getting ready to say, I'd love for you to send me a picture so I can post it. That's oh, awesome yeah. swag right there. Yep, so that's number one from Tulane in 2018. The 2019 season, we have another great year, and we're going to the second bowl game. It's like the first time we've done consecutive bowl games in a, in a while, if ever, maybe. And we end up playing Southern Miss in the Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, that was uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, it was on January 4th. And we actually spent New Year's as a team together in Fort Worth. And that was a great experience, memories, my friends. And we ended up winning that one and getting this one here. Man, look at the green on that. That is so awesome. Beautiful. Wow. So those are two rings I cherish. And now I'm just waiting to get that uh, Conference USA Championship ring from UAB. That's right. That's right. Man, I want to see close up pictures of those. That's I'll definitely send you some. Cool. And Kobe, we got just a couple of more minutes. If you get through this season for Samford and you get some looks in one of the pro leagues, whether it's NFL, CFL, whatever it may be, do you think you want to give those a shot or do you think this will be it for you? Or, or have you have you put that together in your head? I'm saying absolutely. I'm going to give it a shot. Whatever league calls my number, I'm going to, you know, go out there and perform. I mean, it's become a lifestyle now that uh, it's like a job to me, you know, kicking and working out and just the mental, all three of those things put together. Well, I'm going to come back to that in just a second. I want to welcome Damon Glasgow. I want to welcome Chandler Davis. And there's a few other folks who've joined in. I'm talking Chandler Davis. That's my man right there. That's right. That's right. Talking with Kobe Neenan and, Kobe, I want to ask you, when you're a a kicker, you're going to be known for one of two things. You're incredibly consistent. You make all the game-winning kicks, or you happen to not make one, and you shank it, or whatever. Nobody wants to be known for that. The, The crappy thing to me is the Scott Norwood effect. He was a phenomenal kicker for many, many years in the pros. And he pushes the ball right in an unfortunate key time of a Super Bowl. And unfortunately, that's what he's more known for. So here's my question. How do you create that short-term memory, that's my term, and forgetting about the kick that you didn't make and get back on track for that confidence to get the kicks that you know you will make? It's not something you can immediately have. I call it that backbone you got to have. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something I've kind of developed over years of, you know, just different things, you know, that would, you know, knock somebody down. But, you know, consistently getting back up, it's harder to knock me down. It, it's, I think you have to have that confidence, whether it's a quiet confidence that's inside all athletes or all successful people have, or if it's your personality, you wear it on your sleeves and everybody sees it in your your stature and your body language. And it doesn't matter to me. I mean, everybody's a little bit different, but as long as you have that, I think regardless if you are a pitcher in baseball or a hockey goalie or whatever sport you play, you have to have that if you're going to have some confidence, not only in yourself, but to give that also to your teammates. Because I suspect when you make a big kick, your teammates feed off of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, Kobe, we, we got two, two or three more minutes, and I, I want to get 
I've asked this of Brian, Jack, Jensu, all the kickers over the last several weeks. We've had a run of kickers in the last six weeks, and it's been awesome. But my, my, my next to last question to you is, let's say I'm a sixth or seventh grader and I really like kicking and I want to I head down that and see if that's something that I can develop in high school and maybe even beyond. And it's not just getting out there and kicking. There's so much more to it. What would be, if you're at a camp and some sixth grader comes up to you, what are you going to share with them to maybe help get them on their way? Well, I'm going to tell them it doesn't happen overnight. That they've got, if it's a sixth grader, they've got six years to develop and train. And that's something that they'd have to be committed to. It's not for everybody, but I mean, there's several guys that have, that I've met that have been through it and some make it and some don't. I can think of one now who's the next up is uh, William McCarthy. I remember um, him looking up to me at Northview, him being a seventh or eighth grader at the time, telling me how he wanted to kick. And I told him, you can do it. If you want it, you can do it. Is, is he the current Dothan high kicker? That's right. Yep. Is he an upcoming senior, I guess, this I, year? I think he's about to be an upcoming senior this year. Very good. Very good. Well, Kobe, thank you so much for your time today and sharing a little bit of your journey and some insight in the minds of a six-year now Samford University kicker. Thank you, bud. I thank you, too. And I just want to thank my parents, the whole Northview staff, um, Coach Stewart, all my friends that were there for the journey. And I appreciate you, too. Well, we're going to make sure we get the Samford schedule posted in the Northview group so we can come check you out and watch you kick this year. So guys, make sure you follow. We don't know his jersey number yet. He'll get that in the next week or two, but uh, check out Kobe this year for Sanford. And thank you once again, guys, who showed up for the live conversations and who will watch us later on every Wednesday night. We'll be back to our regular time next week. Y'all have a safe rest of your week. Y'all be well.